Hello, Sofa Squad. Welcome to another edition of True Crime Edition Time. Y'all, today we're going to be talking about some stuff that's not usual for this channel, which is some more pop culture type figures. We're also going to be talking about you know who, Miss Lori and Miss Chad. But I want to discuss that monster, Josh Duggar, y'all. I had no idea of the rabbit hole on that. A lot of you have been like, Paul, do something on Josh and da da da. Well, you know, I haven't been feeling well. I've had a little extra time to just kind of do whatever. And so I went down that rabbit hole and I was like, oh my God, I, I oh my God. So we have to talk about it. And then also that whole Britney Spears thing. I was just like, let me see exactly what this tea is. And when I looked at read the transcript from her court appearance, I was like, oh my God, I didn't know this was going on. So we're going to dish on that for a little bit. Now, before we get started, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to the mods, the channel subscribers, the Patreons, the members, the watchers, the viewers. Thank you so much for making the Sofa Squad a possible place. I really appreciate it and I love this community we've built. If you also want to see more videos by me and help support the channel, uh, consider joining the membership or Patreon. There you're going to see lots of different things like story times, uh, absurd crimes that I dish on, personal life stuff, as well as some topics that are like too hot to dish on the main channel. Also considering subscribing to my movie channel, uh, I actually just did a couple of movie review things uh, on Misery and The Conjuring. That's why we're here in Horror Land World back here, because truth be told, I don't have time to change the set before we recording this, so we're just going to go with it. And also, I want to give a shout out to Kelly for my new little shirt. I'm loving it. That was sweet of you. Thank you so much. Now, let's go ahead and jump on in that pot and get to dishing. Okay, y'all, before we begin, I'm just going to give a trigger warning for this first one, y'all. This is Josh Duggar. He is vile. He is a monster. He is repulsive. He is disgusting. Okay, we're not going to get into specific details about what he did because that's, you can go down that rabbit hole. I put some things down below. Uh, but we are just going to talk a little bit about it because I was just reading it and I was like, how is this guy even out? Okay, I mean, I'm just, uh, this whole story shocks me. So remember, Josh Duggar is the son of the Duggars from 19 Kids and Counting. He is their oldest son. They had a reality TV show. It was very popular. And that's where pretty much everybody knows him from. Now, he is married to a lady by the name of Anna Keller. They have six children with another one on the way. Before we even get into it, Anna is standing by him and she says that he's innocent so okay so one of the most recent things that took place which is what made me say okay let me look into this is his defense team was like look we want to push this out to like february 2022 and they're basically saying you know what there's so much forensic stuff we have to do with computers and devices and stuff like that that it's going to take a long time to do it and of course the prosecution is like mm, no three months is just fine you know we don't need to put this out that long because y'all i have a feeling that this is going to be one of those cases <sighs> where I don't see how he's not going to be found not guilty, okay? And these are really horrifying crimes. It's not going to be a cute look for him in prison. Now, the charges that Josh is up against are related to children and imagery that's found on the internet, and he's facing charges of receiving and sending said imagery. So he's looking at a possibility of 40 years total and like $250,000 fine on each of these things if he gets convicted. Okay, so... I mean, it's intense. And honestly, if you ask me from the stuff I'm seeing, I'm like, 40 years, that's it? Yeah, no. So this isn't his first time at the rodeo. In 2015, a 2006 police report surfaced. Now, this police report didn't do him any favors, okay? It showed evidence of him doing things to several underage girls, some of them being his siblings. Now, at that time, he did say, you know what, I'm sorry for any wrongdoings that I did. So, there's that. Now, fast forward to this most recent stop. He got out on bail like a week after he was arrested, so there's that. He had to stay with basically like a friend of the family, like this couple. And they took him in because it was like the Christian thing to do or whatever. And, you know, we'll see how that goes. Now, Josh is allowed to see his children so long as his wife is present. He's not allowed to see any other minor children. And I'm like, thank God. Okay. Thank God. Here's my thing. If he didn't mind doing that stuff to his siblings, and some of the evidence that has been found on his computer is so horrifying, I get he has not been proven guilty on this yet. Okay. There's that. But when you ring this kind of bell, and there's already evidence showing that before... I'm just like, 
do we really need him around his own kids? I mean, is this really going to be a thing? So here's the part that the rabbit hole that I went down that I was like, oh my God. Okay, and this is trigger warning, y'all. So when they did like a bond hearing and all this kind of stuff, some of the investigators spoke and that is some jaw dropping info that they were giving. So one of the agents described some of the stuff that they found on his computer. Y'all, one of the videos was called Daisy's Destruction and it's centered around an 18 month old. Okay, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about it. There is an article if you want to read more of what, there's a podcast on it. I did not listen to the podcast, I just read the article and I was like, I don't think I can listen to the podcast. Um, but there's a podcast on it and they talk to this agent and it's absolutely just, it's what nightmares are made out of. Now, apparently, allegedly, this video was made by literally one of the worst of the worst people in that world. His name is Peter Scully. Now, Peter is currently serving a life sentence in the Philippines for, I mean, numerous charges, y'all. And I don't want to say them here, but some of those charges also are him making these kind of videos and putting them out internationally on the dark web, which is what, what authorities are alleging Josh accessed them through. So an Australian broadcaster published the report that this agent did on the arrest of Scully. And they said that, you know what, we were allowed to go to the crime scene. It was his house. It was like rural. And this is where they filmed the Daisy movie and like, you know, obviously lots of other stuff. And they were like, it was so horrifying what happened in this house and seeing this and what was on that video. He was like, if I even so much as hear the word Daisy, it's literally trigger triggering PTSD, chills to my damn bone. I cannot handle it. It has affected me that deeply. So here's my thing. We're going to wait and see what, you know, okay, when is this trial going to happen? And like I said, the connections that Duggar seems to have to this like incredibly dark underworld are shocking. They're disgusting. And honestly, I don't think he ever needs to see the light of day again. I think 40 years is too little. I get he has not been proven guilty, but I mean, we've already found the evidence. I mean, it's already, he's already gone through the whole thing of what he did to his family members. Members. So this is not a far cry. And they're saying he has over like 200 images and this crazy stuff on this computer. So I'm going to be curious how he even talks his way out of it. The one thing that gets me, I guess, is like when people like this and you see like, you know, them promoting this, what I consider this false image of family and all this stuff while they're doing these heinous, disgusting things behind the scenes. It's appalling and my heart goes out to all of the lives that he destroyed and ruined. Okay, y'all, now I don't think saying let's go to a lighter note is the right word because this is just as bizarre, but it's not as dark as that. And what I'm talking about is Britney Spears. Now, again, if you're in my age bracket, you know, we kind of grew up with Britney. She was just like, you know, reinvented team pop and all this type stuff. And so obviously Britney has had some mental health issues through the years. She has ended up in this conservatorship, which recently there's been this whole thing going on of people with free Britney movement, all that type stuff where a lot of people have come together and they're like, look, we, something's not right. She needs to get out of this and so on and so forth. So this is the first time Brittany went to court. She spoke out loud. It was released to the media that essentially we're hearing her speak about what the details of this conservatorship are. And it's shocking. Now I'm going to link in the description a uh, link to the article that has like the full transcript. And then there's also audio that you can listen to as well if you just want to hear her say it. I read the transcript because I was like, I just want to see the words. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just hear it because some of it is kind of out there a little bit uh, but I was like I want to see the damn words I want the tea in writing so I'm gonna talk about some of my main takeaways on this now first of all she's been on this for like 13 years so it's been a long time now remember she's a powerhouse in the music industry so I mean she is worth like I think what 50 million dollars so a lot of money at stake a lot of money to be made in the future at stake so this conservatorship was put into practice in 2008 following some mental health issues if you remember there was just several things she shaved her hair off you know she got married to that guy at one point i mean there was some stuff going on now at first she kind of credited it for like saving her financially and like saving her life from being 
manipulated and used and all that kind of stuff by people that vultures essentially now one thing that's interesting is she said you know what i've been silent for years on this and it's given this false impression that i'm fine and happy with this and i've even at times said that i'm fine and happy with it but i was lying i was lying to the world I didn't know how miserable I was. She said she's been in shock and she's been traumatized. Now let's talk about some of the stuff that we've learned from her, you know, the speech and all that. And then since then, you know, things coming out about what is in this conservatorship, because I'm just like, oh my God, I've got some opinions on it. The conservatorship, it has the power to restrict her visitors. It also arranges visits with her sons. Now, Kevin Federline, the dad, he has full custody. Now it can take out restraining orders in her name. It also makes medical decisions and her business deals. Now she can get married, but the conservatorship has to approve it along with any of her other major life decisions. Now the dad and his attorneys, you know, they're all like, look, she's worth $50 million. This conservatorship has protected her from getting ripped off. She's vulnerable because of her state to being, you know, worked out of all her money, basically. Now, another big dynamic is that if she wants to get off the conservatorship, she would have to, like, prove herself mentally. And she is basically saying, I want off of this without having to be evaluated. I don't want that to happen because I think she probably knows, look, they're just going to say this and that because the stories that she's recounting in this are literally like it's to me you know it's like lifting a veil off of hollywood again and you're just like this is disgusting this girl is nothing more than a product i get she's had some issues along the way i get she might need some help here and there making some decisions but the things that are being done to her are so exploitive that I'm just like, oh my God, she's literally nothing but a product. It very much reminds me of the Michael Jackson thing towards the end with that last tour he was going to do when he died of a drug overdose. You know, and they keep talking about oh, these people that are in control and da 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 da. Well, you hear Britney talking, and you're like, well, this is how it happens. Now, one thing that Spears said in this is she's like, look, I want to marry my boyfriend Sam. I want to have a baby with him. And she's like, but I'm not even allowed to ride in the same car with him. And so she can't get married to him. And she has an IUD in, and she wants it taken out so that she can try and have a baby another baby and she can't even make that decision on her own because other people are in charge of her medical decisions and i'm just like oh my god i mean that part i'm like oh whoa <laughs> i mean all of it i'm like whoa over but when you get down to that it really drives home how little control she has over her life and her own body. Now she talks about this whole event back in 2019 where she failed some psychological test. And she's like, my father sent me back to, you know, basically a treatment facility. And he absolutely loves having power over someone like me. He relishes in it. And I mean, if what she's saying is true in that regard, which I mean, t I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and say anything. I obviously am not you know, related to these people or know them, but the little bits that I've seen, I'm just like, yeah, it's kind of looking like some exploitation within the family is going on too. Now, Spears also describes the scene of like nurses coming to her or watching her for hours a day at her home, giving her medication. She talked about being put on lithium because, you know, she did this and it didn't jive with everybody. So... What it sounds like to me, and my sofa unprofessional opinion, is that, yeah, probably at one point when she was kind of going off the rocker a little bit, because remember, I mean, she was literally, I mean, and she still is like mega famous, okay? I can't imagine that kind of fame. We're going to go off on a sofa sidebar for a second. I can't imagine that kind of fame. I mean, I remember being a little kid and being like, yeah, that'd be cool to be famous and be like these singers and stuff. And I mean, getting older and like realizing what life is really about, I'm like, oh my God. And you see situations like this where you're like, that's so sad. I mean, this is so sad and heartbreaking. Fame and money is not worth that, okay? And I mean, I get she's a professional. She does like what she does, and she is good at what she does. And... Uh, but everyone has control all over her. And so these scenes that she's describing of, you know, being forced to go on a tour, being forced to do a, re a residency right after a tour. And, you know, it all makes more sense now. Like, remember, I don't even remember what show it was, but it was like an award show. This is a hot minute ago. And she was clearly not prepped for it. She didn't know the moves. and It was very embarrassing for her. You see these little blips in time. Now, also, I know I'm still going off of my rant here. One of the things, too, is on TikTok. She's on, like, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. 
And people have been posting these videos of her, you know, that she posts, and clearly she is not well in some of these. And you're just like, well, what drugs do they have her on? You know, <laughs> I mean, you just, you have to wonder what's being done to this poor girl. Now, this is not just an easy, the judge says, okay, great, thanks, Brittany. I mean, she'll, she'll probably have to go through some kind of evaluation and test to be able to get control of her own life again. And maybe they'll do like a lesser degree of things and see how that goes. Again, we're not there. We don't know what's really going on behind the corners. We don't know if she's having meltdowns over this or that. I mean, I don't know, but I just feel like the scene that's being described. I'm almost like this would give anyone a meltdown. You know, <laughs> this would cause people to do that when you're out of control of your life. And the fact that all these people, it's like, well, we're going to sue you if you don't do this and sue you if you don't do that. I mean, these stars and singers and movie people and music people, they get involved you know, and it's their career, it's what they do, but it seems like they get involved with these people that they're just a product to, and they will use that product up until that product is gone and dead. So y'all, on that note, let's talk about the last and certainly not least, Lori and Chad. It looks like Lori has made it off to her little <laughs> temporary home. Lord mercy, I hope they have secured the damn windows. Because let me tell you what, the last damn thing that we need running around out there is her ass. Okay. Now, y'all, the time of this recording, it's Friday. So their little movie is going to be coming out tomorrow, Saturday. If she has access to a television, y'all already know she's going to watch it. You already know she's going to watch it and it will fly completely over her head and she'll fixate on something like, my hair's better than hers or my makeup's better than hers or why didn't they get this actress? Something along those lines. I just feel like I can sense that reaction. So it's see that she is in supervised custody at another facility. Now remember, she's going to stay there for like up to 90 days until they have brought her back up to par to be able to participate in this trial. If that doesn't happen, she could stay there for potentially another 180 days. So we're just going to have to see. I mean, I personally think she's just going to keep riding out Crazy Train because I do think she's crazy, but I think she's also knows what she's doing. I don't think she's not accountable for her actions, but I think she probably is going to figure out how to work the system. R look at her past actions. This is somebody who is very good at manipulating things and others. And so we're just going to see what happens with that. Now, on the flip note, little Mr. Daybell is headed to trial. Y'all, if I could take the whole damn six weeks off, I would. I'd damn near fly out there just to see, but you know it's going to be packed. I expect this to be a total you-know-what show. Uh, I hope that he is found guilty on everything. I hope they throw him under the jail. I hope he never gets out. So the trial is scheduled for November 8th, and they're expecting it to last for five weeks. So... You already know with prior and means if they're the ones who are going to be like heading it up or whatever. But I do expect this is going to take forever. And I think some of it's going to be shocking. You know, I think we're going to see some characters up there. Cough, cough, Melanie. Cough, cough, Julie. And we're just going to be glued to this like, are you kidding me? But at the end of the day, what I pray for is that he never walks out of that prison. Because he is a horrifying human being who... I mean, again, this is allegedly, but I'm sorry. I think that if he didn't hands-on take uh, Tammy and those kids out and stuff like that, I mean, he might as well have. I think all of them never seen, need to see the light of day again. So that's just my sofa opinion. Now, y'all, don't forget, if you want to check out my movie channel, I recorded a couple of things today. It'll be up there, but I'm going to post the thing up here in the links down in the description below. Again, thank you to everyone who makes the channel possible. Uh, liking, commenting, sharing, the subscribers, the members, the mods, I really appreciate it. If you want to see some more of my little crazy annex and story times, consider a membership or a Patreon thingamajig. And that's it, everybody. I really appreciate all of you. I love you, Sofa Squad, and until next time, I'll see you then.